If you want to learn how to trade just like me, join the community, click the private discord link, sign up through this membership level and you will gain access to weekly group mentorship calls for free. This is most likely going to be the most important crypto update that I bring out this year. So we have seen some incredible moves over the past few days. Uh, over the last month, we were saying that while Bitcoin is under 30,000, we're going to be keeping bearish. And the moment that that is being broken, we're flipping into a bull. Now, we don't want to be no uh, any stubborn person and just stick to one bias. We have validation and invalidation points. And we kept to our bearish scenario while underneath $30,000. I had a, um, a 29 to 30K area of resistance over here. That was just marking out pretty much that 1618 that you see on the chart. Now brought uh, your attention to this fib and we've spoken about this earlier today in the Discord community. Uh, we do weekly group calls so if you want to join we have one tonight uh, where we'll talk a lot about this and teach you guys how to use the fibs and where you want to place trades using them. So we already spoke about in yesterday's injective update how we met uh, where we were expecting after the break of the one fib level that we're going to go ahead and meet these targets so we met the tp1 and tp2 so that's great hopefully you profited on that let me know in the comment section below we were also talking about casper and how casper needs to break this high for us to invalidate the bearish scenario so that for example like with bitcoin we were saying 30k is what's keeping bitcoin bearish it was the same for this this is what was keeping Casper bearish, 51900, and we see the break of that. So we just need to maintain above that. And that's what we saw of Bitcoin. We saw Bitcoin breaking through 30K, flipping that in support. And then we got this massive pump to 35K. So what we're now looking at on the chart, on the Bitcoin chart, uh, which I've just uh, shown you is these fibs. Now these fibs are, are showing uh, the prices um, based off the one fib level at 25K back in February of this year. And I believe 19K from March. Let me just double check that. Yeah, February to March 2023. Yes. So we can see that we've pretty much after creating the reverse wave by breaking through the golden pocket and the one fib level and flipped into support over here at 25K, we've met the first three targets. And with this pump that broke through the 1618, which we were saying we need a break of 29 to 30K to flip Bitcoin bullish. And we got the pump that we are anticipating meeting our uh, TP4. Uh, five however tp6 over here has not been met so we met the first three four and five here at and then we have tapped 35k today so the question becomes when is bitcoin going to top out well if we look at this chart and read the fibonacci's we would essentially say that while we are still above 23,000 over here we would still meet this target okay that could actually still mean we could go down to 23,000 and yet still go up to 36,000 afterwards. I know it'd make more sense to just go up one more K to 36K. But when I sorry, if you can hear my cat, for once it's a change, you're not hearing my pug, you're hearing my cat. But uh, yeah, so <laughs> that's throwing me off. But essentially, guys, although we're just 1K away from this final target, you are allowed to dump all the way back down to the golden pocket which is down at 23K and still continue upwards afterwards. That is what I'm trying to get at. The reason being is this is where everything changed, this golden pocket right here. We were measuring from Feb to March. It gave us the areas of rejection, the golden pocket for continuation lower. However, we changed this path completely in validation. So we would have been saying, we are bearish underneath this. The moment we break this, we're bullish. Because that's, that's correct. We're using this as a Fibonacci retracement tool. That is the name. So you measure a push. It's telling you we're retracing to here and then continue in your original trend, which was a big downward push. So you expect retrace to here and then a big downward push. And then we create the reversal wave by breaking through 23K. So that's why we could have even at this point lost the 25K low over here, dumped down to 22 to 23K, and we still would have continued up high into that point. Now I'm going to uh, go back to our current chart right now because I need to place a new set of fibs. And I'm going to go over some more important things uh, very shortly. So make sure if you haven't already to like, subscribe, comment and share. Uh, we do these updates every single weekday. And so what we're now going to do is use some new sets of fibs from here to there. 25k low right there. And we can see that our 1618 target is up here. Hasn't been met. But we can see acting as confluence, we've got two targets right here. The sixth target out of this and the third target out of the new set of fibs. And we were saying on the channel uh, um, over the last few days 
that we needed a break above $28,100 to get this final pump into 29.30K. Break, uh, as long as 30K is resistance, we're considering this bearish. On the break of 30K, we're flipping into a bull. You have to understand as a trader, it is like this. There's validation and invalidation points. As soon as you see those things happening, you have to change your stance. So Bitcoin has decided to continue to these final sets of targets over here. We can see that out of the new sets of fibs has met the first and second, out of the old ones met the fourth and fifth. The only ones missing are the third one here and the sixth one here, 36 to 37,000. I'm going to make this a massive brick wall of resistance between 34.8 and 37K over here. For me, if we're not breaking through this point, we're going to be seeing a correction. And I'm going to show you a little um, example of why this move up at the moment might just be a bull trap. I know, why would you say that, Louis? You said breaking above 30K is bullish. That's correct, but we've now met some key targets. And when we do so, we usually tend to reverse. I'm gonna uh, show you a little image right now of Wyckoff distribution that could say that what is going on right now, it could all still be part of Wyckoff distribution, which eventually does end up coming down lower. And again, guys, if we do have a massive crash eventually, we just need to hold above this area over here, 23K, if we do want to continue uh, with those targets being kept valid. You can come below this point. We do have a CME gap lower. So technically, on a technicality, you just need to hold above 19.6K and we will still continue higher. Look, we've got a 40, 43 and a 44, let's just say 45K target up ahead. But are we now going to be seeing a dump? Uh, we just need, obviously, we need things to, to keep happening. We need the days and weeks to go by. We need the hours to go by because right now there's not a lot on the chart. It's just a straight green line. And we would know that if you want to buy these big green candles, you're usually going to get shafted. So what we're now going to do is get rid of these Fibonacci's, or at least that one. And then I'm going to show you this Wyckoff schematic where we see a high, a higher high, and a higher high. A low, a higher low. And this is quite interesting over here. So after our first high, we put in this low, then a higher high, then a higher low, then a higher high. So three higher highs, two higher lows. Look at the Bitcoin chart right now. That is exactly what we're printing on the chart. And this is why this could be one of my most important updates this year. So we've got the, the high here, the low, the higher high, that's slightly higher, higher low over here because we failed to break this. And then we've got this higher high. And we can go back to the Wyckoff schematic and we can see that this would be a deviation where we are continuing to these bullish targets. And, uh, and then, as you can see, eventually coming back down to the neckline and losing it. So once this is completed, then we reverse and go back up. And that could be us. Uh, let me just try and draw it. <laughs> it's going to be so ugly. Uh, and then that could be us coming back down to this area. Now, as I said, we need to hold about 22 to 23K to keep uh, those higher price targets valid, which was uh, that uh, all the way up until 45K. However, realistically, you can come down below it, but you must at all costs maintain this. If you go ahead and lose 19.6K, then it's KO. You're not going up to those targets. We're coming down lower. So you can actually deviate from that bullish path if you go down below it. But we must hold above the zero fib and then climb back up that golden pocket and then eventually go back higher to 45k. This could all still happen, guys, because uh, realistically, we do get a dump before the, the April uh, halving that's coming up. Uh, if you just go look in the past, you will see that in the months leading to it or the year leading to it, we do have dumps. And we can see since the beginning of the year down here, 1st of January marked out right there for you guys. We have been in an uptrend with no huge corrections. This wasn't more of a sideways one over here. In fact, it never went bearish because it was holding the higher highs and the higher lows. So we've really just been in the, uh, in an uptrend uh, so far this year. So that's why I was believing that before April next year, we will be getting uh, a, a much larger correction. And this could be what's setting us up. Everyone now is getting exciting, uh, excited, even myself. The fact that we broke above 30K is super duper uh, bullish, simply because if we were holding that area as resistance, there was risk of a triple top over here or a head and shoulders pattern or just a double top. And then this is just being a lower high and then we do come down lower. But could it be that we're going for the max pain scenario where right now we're just hitting all the, liquidating all those shorts as we were anticipating, breaking out bullish, 
loads of people entering long. We saw loads of shorts getting liquidated uh, with all their stop loss above this point get, yeah, getting tapped. Could we now be looking for that max pain scenario where we do be, uh, do actually come down lower? This is just a thought process of mine. I'm not saying this is going to happen, uh, but um, I'm going to keep this in the back of my mind. I'm going to analyze this day to day as I usually would, but do keep this in the back of your mind. Again, this could still be the Wyckoff schematic that is actually at play over here because we are following this pretty much exactly at the moment. Big run up into the first high. And we see that over here, big run up into first high, then the low, then a higher high, higher low, higher high, where we break all of the resistances and then eventually come down lower. And what could lead to us believing that this could be a potential scenario is that we're meeting our final sets of targets from this Fibonacci that we're using from February to March of this year. So I want to know your thoughts in the comment section below. Do you think this Wyckoff distribution schematic could be at play? Again, at all costs, we must maintain above 19.6k. To keep those 45k targets valid, you do need to maintain this. So you could come down all the way to 22, 23k and we would still go up to there. But if we break below this, you're on a different path now where we're trying to lose this. But if you do maintain it, we've got the chance to get back above and go up like that. Um, one final thing that is going to tell, well, is that is going to help us uh, realize that this could also be a top is the Bitcoin CME uh, chart. It opens and closes like the stock market. And so with that, as we know, cryptos are 24 seven, uh, cryptos continue to move. But as this follows the stock market opening closing times, there'll be points where this closes. So there was always going to be gaps because Bitcoin's constantly moving. And with this correction over here, we saw that if we ever lost this level, which was a, uh, which was a previous resistance now support, then we just fall back to the previous support down here at 20 to 21 K. However, as we never lost them, we got that bullish divergence, which I called suggesting that we would pump to 30 K. Hopefully took that trade, then saying that Bitcoin is bearish underneath it. We broke through 30 K. Then we flipped bullish and look over here, guys, we had a CME gap right there at 34.3 to 35,000. That was not yet filled and it would be sooner or later, we would then obviously suggest if this one's not being filled and we're going to eventually correct that after this correction, we're going to go up. But could we <laughs> right now be in some crazy trap where we're going up first and then eventually coming down to there to then eventually reverse and then go up into the bull market? I think that if we are believing that there will be a crash before the halving in April 2024, that this could be a likely scenario. As we saw over here, this was a CME gap that was filled. However, it looked like we were topping out over here. There was, in fact, bearish divergences that just took us back down to the key level of support. And then we saw some bullish divergences over here, which we called for to enter trades to 30,000, which is where we, uh, you should have closed those trades. So I want to know your thoughts in the comment section below. Could we be on a path like this right now? Usually when we meet a CME gap, we do tend to reverse. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it from me today, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Like, subscribe, comment and share. Keep this in the back of your mind, but the following updates are just going to be more on the shorter term uh, time frames, but do keep this in the back of your minds. If any of you are interested in learning how to trade just like me, there's multiple options. Click this ebook. It covers all the strategies that I use in these YouTube updates. So you will have all the same skills, covers the Japanese candlestick, chart patterns, support and resistance, why I use EMAs over trend lines, Fibonacci's, divergences, and again, using these all together to profit using them. I've also got a discount on my course at the moment, which ends at the end of this month. So that's down to hundred pounds. You also gain free access to my Discord community for the next three months where you can expect to be a part of 12 to 24 group mentorship calls. If you want something that's a bit more personalized to your needs, then join my one-to-one -one mentorship plan. You can choose five or 10 hours of my one-to-one -one help and included will be the three months free in the community as well as my six hour long video course.